So I wanted to share a little story. I have been in Florida almost my entire life, born and raised in the South, and I've never experienced racism. I know that's like a bit of an issue, especially nowadays after a year of COVID, now we're supposed to believe that there's like this crazy, you know, anti-Asian thing happening in Manhattan. I guess, because that's where all the racists are in Manhattan, like Oregon. Anyway, so I've been in the South like my whole life, okay? And I actually have met one racist. And if I was going to be more accurate, he was a former racist. And so I'm not really sure how I want to tell this. Um, So I'm just going to really tell you how I met Larry. And Larry isn't his real name. It, It could be. I met him the one time. And he seems super friendly. Um, his story stuck with me more than, more than you know, any desire to get to know him further. But anyway, so I was about 18 years old. My buddy John goes, hey, man, do you want to go over to Brad's house? And I'm like, who's Brad? He's like, that's the guy we worked with at this restaurant. And I'm like, I never worked with Brad at the restaurant. He's like, oh, well, I did. He's really cool. Let's go over there. I'm like, all right. So we go over there. We go over there. Brad has these two friends. Miss Kim, who is a half black, half something else i think part indian or something she was mixed you know and she's on uh, next on the couch to this skinny white dude with this ponytail got some scruff you know and his name is larry and you know everyone's super friendly we're all hanging out it's like a thursday night super chill and larry just very casually goes yeah used to be in the kkk and considering like half the people in the room were uh, were minorities it seemed very odd that he would just volunteer that but I noticed that Miss Kim didn't flinch. She didn't get upset. She wasn't like, you son of a, you know, because she's, she, you know, we're both minorities. And I'm like, well, she's not overreacting or even reacting at all. So maybe Larry has something more to say. And then he, and then he looked at me and real, and he saw that my reaction, because my reaction was kind of like, did you just tell me you were, in, you used to be in the KKK? Because like in my mind, it's like if you ever meet someone that used to be in the KKK, you kind of like look around and see if there's an opportunity to punch him in the face, you know. But he was super friendly, and so he talked about how you know growing up he was really like he was growing up on the outskirts of town, a little bit in the, in the country, you know. And so when when you're limited with who you have around. You kind of just become friends with who's around. And he's like, well, you know, and a lot of my buddies, you know, they were getting into it and stuff. So I was hanging out. We, you know, I never did anything. I never burned any crosses or anything like that. But I was known as a long hair because, you know, he had a ponytail. And I guess that's a classification of supremacists, you know. But uh, he was a long hair. And how he stopped becoming or how he stopped being a racist, even though he, you know, he explained to me how he's like, he's not really, he wasn't a racist. He was just white and he lived in an area with a bunch of white people and they were racist and he was just hanging around racist. But (laughs) he was at a gas station one day and Stone Cold Steve Austin comes walking in. Now, according to Larry, he didn't really know who that was at the time. He wasn't, he was kind of a party guy and, you know, he was from the freaking boonies, you know, he didn't pay that much attention to, to any form of celebrity, you know. And so he sees Stone Cold Steve Austin walk in and Larry explained it in his mind. Stone Cold looked like, uh, looked like all of his buddies that he was hanging out with, you know, uh, big old white dude, goatee, you know, n- no hair you know he so larry just he uh, in a misguided attempt to say hello and greet stone cold he threw up um whatever the kkk people do for their little nazi salute you know because i'm not gonna do it i'm on camera i'm not doing a nazi salute but he did one to stone cold and stone cold apparently did not take that well and proceeded to like he didn't beat larry up i think larry said like stone cold sort of like picked him up like what is wrong with you you know i just censored myself but uh larry was just like oh i'm sorry i I didn't mean anything by it i was just just trying to say hi i didn't think you know he like he just started scrambling because he doesn't want to get his ass beat by a giant man and so he got out of the situation without you know getting uh beaten to a pulp by stone cold which is good on him you know uh shows a lot of restraint for uh mr austin there uh but it made larry think 
Hmm. If I'm going to get my ass whooped for just saying hello, maybe I should rethink who I associate with, who I hang around with. And he didn't put in that many words. He's a bit fried. He says something like, you know, they realize that maybe I just should be hanging around a different, different crowd, you know? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know why I felt like sharing that. I just, it's a story that I think about every so often, you know, because there's a lot of stuff about prejudice and racism going around. And it's like, yeah, some of it is, is, is learned, you know, and all that. But I think if you give people a proper opportunity to realize how wrong they are, They'll just stop hating you, you know? People hate what they don't understand. Once you let people know who you are, you'd be surprised how little hostility there is for you as an individual there is. But um, yeah, that's my little story of the time Stone Cold Steve Austin stopped Larry from uh, being a racist. <laughs>